Hey everybody, welcome back to episode six. As you might have noticed or might not have noticed, may may or might, may not have noticed, <laughs> there we go, there it is, that I uh, took a couple of weeks off. I honestly um, was having a lot of anxiety and depression the last couple of weeks. I don't know why, it just kind of happened. Um, and so even though I plan to do episode six, it's been delayed by three weeks. So I wanted to actually talk about anxiety. So it is so different for everybody. And it's such a struggle for some people to understand because, you know, most of the time people think anxiety is caused by fear, which could be true. It can be triggered by fear and it could also just be triggered by changes in your life. So I want to talk to really dig down deep into what anxiety is and why it is hard to understand um, for ourselves and for other people. And why is it so different across the board? So uh, the last couple of weeks I have kind of just so for me personally anxiety starts um and it can last three to five days it could last two weeks where it's just this horrible feeling of being extremely high um with being anxious and it could feel like jitters it could feel like fear it could also just feel like complete exhaustion and panic um And when I met with, for me personally, when I met with anxiety for that long of a time period, it's met with depression um, and kind of just feeling really down and low. I have been on medications before. I have gone to therapy for it. I know all the things. I know what to do and I know how to do it. It's just my body's way of reacting to what's going on. Now... Um, The hard part is knowing why it's being caused. Sometimes it's because of medical reasons and sometimes it's because of emotional trauma. Um, Sometimes it's just stress. I've noticed for myself that there are so many different triggers that could trigger my anxiety and I just have to be careful. One of those ways is actually food. If I eat a bunch of junk food, I'm not sleeping and then I'm really stressed out, my anxiety is almost 100% guaranteed. So that's really funny to say almost 100%. It really is almost always going to trigger. If I have a bad uh, diet, if I'm not exercising, and if I'm not sleeping. So unfortunately, um, you know, there has been a lot of lack of sleep, I think, in the last year uh, for myself with just working and getting school done. But it hasn't just been the last year. So with anxiety, what tends to happen is when there's a shift in what my normal is, um, it tends to trigger. So for other people, um, that might look and feel different. Sometimes anxiety is crippling and you're on the floor and you're having a panic attack. Um, Sometimes it is a fear of something uh, and and it's just kind of like really an over the top, um, not easily explained phobia. I'm afraid of sharks never been bitten one by one thank the lord <laughs> but but it's just like this weird fear of sharks that i have whenever i go to the water i'm afraid of sharks um but also it could be a social anxiety disorder of of, of going into public um it could also be separation anxiety it could be being overly obsessed over something it could also create sicknesses in some people. And then it could be PTSD. So PTSD is post-traumatic stress disorder. It's after the trauma has happened. Typically, our bodies don't process stress right away. It's a long-term stress. And for so many different people, uh, the pandemic really has affected that anxiety again. For some people who have been um, abused, uh, maybe they were locked away or they were isolated from people growing up or things like that. Um, or even in a relationship where they were isolated by their ex-spouse or, or whatever. The pandemic triggered that same PTSD of being locked away. Um, I know for myself, I have experienced that several times over the last year. And the last year has, regardless of if you have or have not been at home this whole time, you have experienced some sort of stress. So when our bodies are on a high stress level all the time, you tend to see chronic anxiety and depression take hold. It's harder to get out of those each time because your body isn't being able to rest. It is now captivated captivated by fear uh, this entire time because it's just all of the things and, and all of the situations going on. Um, there's hurt. A lot of people have been experiencing a lot of hurt. Um, a lot of 
you know, death, illnesses and things like that this last year. So it's one of those things that anxiety, when it is part, it's kept on for so long, it can go into a depression. Um, or it can go into um, unhealthy eating, which is why working out and staying in a routine is so important. So the hard part is finding out which one, I guess in quotes, <laughs> like which one of these anxieties do you have? And I think for me, what happens is it tends to manifest into other things. Um, one of the things that happens is I'm a, I'm a go-getter, obviously. <laughs> like I'm someone who can, can take on a lot and do a lot and, and go in and um, be beaten down pretty easily. But I feel like the last couple years for me have been so extreme. It wasn't just the pandemic. Um, There's just been so many things where, where I feel like I've been beaten down and I've been able to get back up. And then there's these times where I don't feel I could get up as quick. Um, and the last couple of weeks have been that for me personally, um, which is hard because you want to be able to go into every situation, the best fighter that you can be. Um, I know I will get through every single moment, uh, not because it's it, like a, I don't know. It's not just me being like, oh, I, I, I can over, I can come over, uh, overcome anything I'm faced with, but I just know that I'm not going to allow myself to stay down very long. But I also have people around me who are not going to just let me sit in that anxiety and that depression. So I think one of the biggest things about anxiety is that a lot of people think it's just this fear, um, but it's not. Stress can cause this and stress could be from work. Stress could be from kids. Uh, stress can be from kids. Stress can be from going to school full time, work full time, co- kids full time. Stress can be from medical issues of family, uh, situations with family, like you're stressed out for them. Um, anxiety can just be caused by anything. Uh, but really, there is a huge um, disregard for how much stress can be put on your body when we don't move our body. Um, I think I forget that often. And I've noticed in the the weeks that I have uh, long, long term anxiety, I guess, from from stress is when I'm not moving, I'm not working out and I'm not eating healthy. So I've noticed, too, that um, I'm sorry, I'm moving my glasses because I had to clean them. And so if the sounds weird, it's because I'm cleaning them for anyone who's just listening and not watching the video. Um, so for, for me, the last couple of weeks, I've noticed when I'm in these really bad anxiety spells and then it leads to depression, um, it is due to the fact that I'm not working out. So working out is not the answer. It's just one of the, the key treatments that helps me get back to normal. And I think one of the things that I'm realizing in the last year, actually, I'm not even the last year. In the last three to four years, I put my health on hold uh, with workouts and eating healthy. I just kind of gave up on on it due to just different situations. I was working a lot. I was in school full time. And really what I felt and thought was, I just don't have time, really. Like, I don't have time and I don't have energy to work out. I don't have time and I don't have energy to put into healthier foods. I don't have the mental capacity to pull myself in all these different directions. And I've noticed that stress comes from feeling out of control. Um, And stress can also come from feeling that um, I have to be everywhere all the time and on it all the time. And anxiety can be triggered when I feel like I'm not doing a good job. And um, that that's something that is a reality. And some of the questions that actually came in was, you know, how, how did you feel basically when you, as an adult, were maybe diagnosed with anxiety or depression? And I think that there's this really, I'm, I'm pulling up the questions too, because I have them. Um, but one of the things that I, that I wanted to say is with anxiety, because it's so different, I think we all respond differently to a diagnosis. And I, I've been kind of just sitting on this for a while, um, probably a good solid two and a half months thinking through these questions, because I think it's really important not just to give an answer and it to be the answer. I think this is really where this question coming in is, okay, when you, when you're having this diagnosis diagnosed, there's multiple emotions that go into this. Um, one of those is, oh my gosh, finally you found something. Finally, I can put a name and a label to it. But then there is also shame 
that comes with it of like I'm not strong enough I'm not good enough I'm weak um and and that's not true but that's what we tell ourselves I'm not capable of handling my emotions um another thing that comes from a diagnosis sometimes is uh anger where it's well, why can't I just be better? Why do I have to deal with this? You have this feeling of not being normal. And anxiety and stress is actually a very normal thing for our body to go through because what it's doing is it's saying something is not right and I need to fix it. Uh, my body needs to protect itself from what this is. And our bodies are not made for long-term stress. Our bodies are not made for long-term anxiety. So when we have that, we have to pull back somewhere to be able to identify what is causing the anxiety and the stress and to reevaluate a little bit. Um, I know I kind of laugh when people are like, oh, you just, you know, you're stressed out from your job. You're getting anxiety because of your job or, um, you're getting anxiety because you're in school or your anxiety is happening because of life. Uh, we can't, we can't leave our jobs. We have to pay our bills. I mean, you could, but you, chances are you're not going to be able to pay your bills. Um, you can't, you can't just isolate yourself. And that is the first thing anxiety tells you to do is to isolate yourself. The first thing that we do is do that. We do isolate ourselves. We don't tell anybody how we're feeling. We feel ashamed of how we're feeling. And, um, it's almost like if we admit that we're struggling, we do feel like someone will come and be like, you need to toughen up and you need to get up and you need to go and you need to stop complaining. We feel that. Um, I think for me, the hardest part about admitting that I'm having anxiety or depression or I'm not feeling good emotionally is that it feels dismissed sometimes like, oh, yeah, I have that too. get over it. And that is something that's really hard to watch. I know our society is more uh, open about talking about anxiety and depression, spe like specifically more so than the old, older generation. Um, and even the younger generation, I feel like people my age are really comfortable talking about anxiety and depression. But the struggle is we have a harder time showing up for people in, in general, just in general, every generation. Like we are so in our bubble and so in our, our circles that we forget to show up for other people and we forget to check on people. So um, if you're feeling anxious, if you're feeling depression, if you're feeling like you're, you're just weak, please know that you're not. Um, you, you're not weak. Your body is having a hard time processing a hard situation, whatever that might look like. If that's been for years, if it's been for a month, if it's been for a week, if it's been a couple weeks that you've been experiencing this, you're not weak. You're very strong and your body is just saying, Hey, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm, I'm worn out. Um, I, I need you to pay attention for a minute. And so if you're experiencing anxiety, if you're just experiencing stress and, and depression, um, I want you to seek help. I know you need to talk to somebody and say, Hey, this is what I'm experiencing. This is what I'm feeling. Um, what can I do? Some of the things you can do, you can go to therapy. I know it feels really silly. Um, to, you know, even if it's just like you're having stress over finances, that could cause long-term damage on your body. If you're not sleeping and you're not eating right and you're not feeling good emotionally it can cause a lot of it can cause a lot of damage and it can cause long-term stress so what what you need to do is is you need to talk to someone and say this is what I'm stressed out about and I don't know what to do at this point point." and this this in in therapy their job is not to be like oh let's kumbaya it out or or let me tell you there's this medication or let me tell you how to fix all your problems that stem from your childhood and this is why you're stressed out about finances that's not it most counselors will say okay this is a real stress you're stressed out that you can't afford your mortgage and you're not being able to get a better paying job like that's a big thing so they'll walk through some solutions that you can do but also immediate things like medication if it's really bad and you're not sleeping at night it's really important to be able to have those moments and say that someone can look and say hey you're not weak because you have to be on medication you're not weak because you have to uh come to therapy you're actually a lot stronger than most people because most people will try to push it under a rug and walk away but you're actually wanting to deal with it 
Um, and then if, if something does stem to your childhood, I know for myself, I always stress over finances because, um, I grew up in poverty and I grew up poor, like poor, poor, poor. And it was really hard to, it's hard to get back into that mindset of like, I just need to, I just need to spend my money better. That's really what it is. It's not that, you know, we're, we're living, um, with barely anything. It's just that I need to spend my money better, but I also need to talk out that fear of backtracking to where, what I was in when I was little. Um, so sometimes it does stem back, but they're not going to, you know, it, it doesn't get crazy. Therapy is not like this weird thing. It's actually really helpful. If you have medications that you're using, it can help. It helps your body go to like, Hey, this is how we should react. And this is how your body has been reacting. And the medication slows your body and relaxes it to say, hey, that's not how we react right now. It's going to re- help retrain your body to properly react. And then there's some things where, where they might suggest like, hey, go get a massage or go work out to where you can get the stress out and the, the toxins out of your body so your body can heal. So um, one of the other questions that we had was, um, it, they just said... No one has ever talked about identity crises that come along with being an adult and finding that you've been undiagnosed with something. I was wondering how uh, much of your personality is just being an undiagnosed disorder. I hear some people talk about it, uh, but never anyone with an actual voice. So I hope I'm understanding this qu- question correctly, but uh, basically what it is, is like if you're having an identity crisis due to being an adult, um, and you finally find out or maybe maybe half of what you what who you are is just because you're undiagnosed with something so for me i have dyslexia i do have anxiety and depression um specifically with the learning disability um i had a lot of anger and i had a lot of i had to show that i wasn't not learning i don't know if that makes sense um so for me when i got the diagnosis of di- of being dyslexic it wasn't a shock but it was like, I knew something was wrong, but I didn't know, like, I just thought I was stupid. And so what I would do is I would go around and just be like, Oh, I'm just I'm an airhead. People might not know this. I'm naturally blonde. Um, I dye my hair darker cause it grows out darker and then it comes to light, but I've, I was blonde, um, my entire life <laughs> and I've dyed my hair darker. Um, but, uh, there was this, this thing inside of me that would, would just kind of play it off as if I didn't know or if I was stupid. Um, like literally not, not, not stupid in the sense of being and acting like I'm just being a punk, but like I, I was mentally not able to do those things. Um, but I would also get really mad when people held me back and people were like, you're just not going to learn this. And I'm like, I can, if you, and I was just a jerk. Um, so a part of that personality was very short triggered, very, it wasn't even personality, just more of how I reacted. Um, I had a short fuse. I was easily angered and I would, um, really struggle to understand how those two connected. Now there are some things where maybe you're OCD or ADHD. Um, and some people might be like, Oh, you're just, you don't know how to pay attention or like, you're just obsessive, obsessive. And it's a little bit more of your personality and you have to kind of learn to work with that to where it's not affecting you negatively. If you're, if your diagnosis isn't hurting you or hindering you or hindering somebody around you, it doesn't need to be exit it out of your life. You don't need to learn new behaviors. So if you're OCD and you turn their lights off all over the, all over the place and you check the doors multiple times, that's not a bad thing. If you're really clean, that's not a bad thing. But when it starts to hurt other people where it's like, maybe you're getting physical with them because of the door not being locked, or maybe, um, you can't have a, uh, you can't get to work on time because you're not being able to leave the house without checking every single door and every single light four or five times and you're always late. Um, those are some things that you do want to work through. So those are great questions. I hope that answered it next time. We're going to actually talk more in depth about this because I just want to make sure, um, we get to talk about it. So you guys have a wonderful day and thanks for chiming in. (music) 